Cisco Duo, group policy creation with RDP two-factor authentication. Again, this is an acquisition Cisco recently made. Great acquisition. Uh, it's really going to round out the security portfolio. So let's get started. We're going to protect an application here. So we come in, protect an app. We'll type in RDP, right? Uh, so we don't have to go through the list. Uh, it does a quick filter. Uh, and then we're going to protect this application. So it's called Microsoft RDP. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a policy and we're going to assign that policy to the systems and network group that we created in the previous video. Fairly trivial to do. And here we're going to create a brand new policy. Now this policy, uh, we're going to give it a name. In this case, I'm calling it system and networks uh, uh, policy. So anything to do with uh, systems and network administration, maybe I'm going to leverage this policy for. And you can see it's fairly much a uh, walkthrough, right? So new user policy. So require enrollment, allow access without two-factor or deny access, right? Group access policy, you can see here, allow access without two-factor, deny access, etc. cetera. Fairly, fairly uh, self-explanatory. Here we're gonna use user location. And, and this is pretty cool in the sense that I can use some geolocation to, to dictate maybe how I might want to enforce a policy. So here, what I've selected is allow access without two-factor. Now keep that in mind for later on. And we'll put in Canada and the United States. And then for all other countries at this point, no action. Ideally, we'll probably come back here and tweak this a little bit. But we're, we're, when we do some testing, uh, I'll add some color. Uh, remember devices, so you can uh, select that if you want to. Operating systems. Right, you have the ability to uh, modify what you may want to do here. Browsers, right? And there's a list of browsers that you can block. Um, so any browser that has maybe more vulnerabilities, maybe you want to restrict that. You can see some Flash and Java content in, in regards to plugins um, that you could certainly uh, restrict or block. Authorized networks that you would want to authorize um, as well as anonymous networks as well. So some, some additional settings that you can play with here. Authentication methods, I'm going to use them all, but you can see there's a, a pretty good list of uh, capabilities there. Uh, dual uh, mobile app, probably want to make sure that you're enforcing up-to-date um, applications, tampered devices, screen lock, full disk encryption, and then you get some biometric capabilities as well. So you can build that policy out and you can add these elements to add additional layers of security if you choose to do so. Here I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. We'll apply that policy. And you can see here, there's the system and network policy. Obviously it, it aligns the settings that we've made changes to. Um, you can, um, apply that to all users. And then here you have group pol or the global policy, right? Uh, that's uh, in line as well. We didn't do anything with the global policy. We, we created one very specific for this use case. So here, username uh, normalization. So this is just ensuring that how you enter that username, we're gonna be able to peel that out, right? And properly understand what's being put in here. Voice greeting, you know, I just added Cisco to the, the the greeting itself, you can make some notes, etc. Um, so here we're gonna only allow that specific group, right? Systems and networks. So that user admin that we created in the previous video is assigned to system and networks. Okay, so pretty cool, right? We've got the group policy created, we've got the application ready to go, and now it's really about now leveraging it. Now, Duo's done a really great job of, of documenting and, and providing videos of how to get things configured. I'm actually really impressed with the, the level of detail that they've included. Um, but again, I want to build this out on my own and, 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 and have you folks kind of walk through it with me. So here you can pivot very quickly to specific areas. I've already downloaded the actual file that we need, but it tells you, you know, go through, create the Duo account, you do this step, this step, and then eventually you get to this portion where you want to uh, install the application on the system that you're gonna have or uh, are protecting, right, RDP from. So go ahead and do the installation. And, it, and again, very self-explanatory. Now you could push this out using group policy and, and things as well, but here I'm only got one or two systems that I'm gonna secure here. Uh, so not a big deal to do this each time. So 
I hit next, right? And now it's asking for the API host name. So we'll go back to uh, the Duo inter interface. And you can see here the API host name, we'll select that. We'll go back into the application, we'll paste that in and we'll hit next. Perfect. All right, so the next step is there'll be two other fields that are required. And that's integration key and then the secret key. The secret key, obviously, you do not want to share with anybody. Um, and I actually don't even show you here. And, and to be quite honest, I even replaced it afterwards anyway. But grab that integration key. And we'll paste it in. And then we'll go back, we'll grab that secret key, right? So when, when you go back in and you grab that secret key, all you have to do is click the view. It'll show up. Again, I've, I've skipped this part, right? Um, and then you've got a couple of settings here, right? Bypass dual authentication when offline, right? Uh, use um, auto push to authenticate if available. Only prompt for dual authentication when logging in via RDP and then enable smart card support, right? The two that are, are checked off are the defaults and that's all I'm gonna do in this example. But you can see you've got a couple of options here. One of which is if you can't connect to the cloud uh, to, to authorize that second factor, you wanna make sure that you're able to still log in. And, and that's uh, one of the, the second setting there, or the first setting uh, that you wanna select. Again, the default. And then you go through and hit next, right? Um, uh, obviously this will do the installation and you're really ready to go, right? It's all about now uh, testing. And it's that simple, right? No appliances built in or set up in your infrastructure for this scenario, right? There's, it's the cloud and then the application uh, that you need to install. So we hit finish here. And we'll just go through and I'm just going to make sure that I save the settings here. We'll go back to dashboard and let, let's do some testing. All right, so let's RDP into a machine. You can see I've got an iPhone on the side here. And put in the credentials, this username, password. And you see this bad request. Now I was gonna edit this out and I thought, you know what, it's probably good to show. You wanna make sure your time is set up correctly, right? Uh, if you have timing issues, then you're gonna get that, that uh, same example there. So I fixed that, what? No two-factor authentication. If you saw that, I didn't get prompted at all. And you know why? Remember that uh, location setting, that user location setting that we configured in that policy itself? Well, we said allow access without two-factor authentication for Canada and the United States and all other country, no action. So I was connecting from Canada or the United States. So it actually worked as expected. So let, let's make some changes here. Let's force or require two-factor authentication. And ultimately, all other countries, I'm probably going to deny uh, access, right? Um, now, I've done that. I didn't update that here, but I have updated it since, right? Because I don't want other countries logging in. If I need to make that change too, because I'm admin on, on the console, I can always make that change. So it's easy. All right. So let's disconnect that RDP session. Let's get everything set up here. All right, we've got, uh, we'll get the phone set up. There we go. And we'll go ahead and connect. We get that second login box, obviously. We'll log in, or that first login box, we'll log in. And now you can see I get prompted. Now it happens fast, right? So that, that duo push actually, there, it's already sitting in my um, text messages, uh, but I missed it, right? So I went through and I actually clicked it again, but you can see there's two login requests and all I did was click it and then I hit approve. 
pretty slick, right? Pretty clean and easy to do. Um, worked right out of the gate other than my timestamp issue in regards to not having time synchronized. Um, and then you can come in here and look, right? I can see dual pushed. I see the, the area that I've uh, connected from. I can see where it was denied too because I didn't respond in time. Pretty easy stuff, right? Uh, again, you know, 10 minutes, we went through, created group policy, we assigned it to an application, we've done some testing, and we're all done.